is Lata. Lata Fat. 681 pounds of leverage. The fighting throws, folks. I want you to see Lata. Go on and smile for the folks, Lata. Show them your picture. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Step up closer and see the most amazing sights ever brought before your eyes. This is Barney from Borneo. The only living gorilla with a brain of a human being. <laughs> Gentlemen, I present to you that mountain of courage, that death-defying daredevil, that master of this demon, the one and only Colonel Billy Gilbert. What? Teddy Barney. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you realize that it wasn't courage. That courage was the only requisite to tame this beast, to capture him in his own habitat. We came upon him all of a sudden, out there in the forest. He was 25 feet from me. I stood stock still. I was unarmed. I had nothing but a small pistol. He came towards me. 15 feet. I didn't move. 10 feet. I didn't move. I moved. Yes. And I moved fast. I'll tell you that. I'm glad you asked me, brother. Now, boys, take Barney back in there and let the show start. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Barney, for his next trick, will show you his finely developed mind. He will do mathematics for you. And now, Barney, tell the ladies and gentlemen how much are two and two. Uh. Mm. 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 That's right, four, that's right. Thank you very much. Mm. Mm. Barney, mm. Barney, Barney, Barney. <laughs> Tommy, what were you doing? Ah, oh, he was attracted by that lovely blonde standing there. <laughs> Barney is not only a gorilla, he's a wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Barney. <laughs> and now we'll put Barney back into his cage. Come on, back up, Barney. Back up, I tell you. Back up. Put him in that stand the door shut, quick. There you are. And now, ladies and gentlemen, that will conclude our performance. So, good night, goodbye, and see you again. about that. We're going on a vacation. What do you say, Chef, we go to Miami, Florida? Well, I don't know. I like Canada. You know, Lake Louise, they say it's simply beautiful. How about California? We could bask in the sunshine. How much money have you got, Billy? In the neighborhood of 11 bucks. And you? Oh, I have roughly not quite 850. Lake Louise, California. We barely got enough money to get to the next town that we work in. Starting to work right away? That's right. Well, it was a nice vacation while it lasted. Now, come on, boys. Hurry up and pack, and we'll leave the first thing in the morning. Okay? Okay. All right, but all work and no play makes me a dull boy. Don't blame that on the work. If you'd have watched your money, you could have had a vacation. I watched my money. But can I help it if those guys made those dice do everything but carry the mail? Uh, ain't it the truth? Ain't it the truth? <laughs> See, I told you, the ropes were loose. Barney keeps doing it. Well, it's okay now. That car's coming down here pretty fast. Look out! That crazy fool, he could have killed somebody. Yeah. Yeah, he... What did he do? Oh, you come on, get down off of there. The updraft got me. Come on, boys, let's get going. Maxie, please drive more carefully. You almost hit those men. I'm sorry, Miss Gardner, but your uncle said that our best. Well, I insist that you slow down. Yes, ma'am. And I'd also like to know where we're going, and why such a rush? Joan, I've already told you there's been an attempt made on my life. I have to get away from town. The police would see that you were protected. I prefer to take care of myself. I don't trust anyone, Mr. Williams. Just as you well, say, but I... Well, this is so mixed up to me. Why would anyone want to kill you? 
I don't know, Joan, and what's more, I don't know who it could be. Unless, uh... Unless what, Uncle? Yes, Mr. Gardner, what is it? If you suspect someone, I think Joan and I should know who it is. You know, Williams, as a secretary, there are times when you are a bit overly familiar. I'm sorry, but after all, I've been with the family a long time, and I think it's my duty to help whenever possible. Of course, Ralph, and Uncle and I do appreciate it. This whole thing has them upset. We just won't talk about it anymore. What time is about a clock on the dashboard, Maxie? 5.58, sir. Is that right? Yes, sir. 5.58. Stop the car, Maxie. Why do you want to stop the car? My hat blew out the window. Oh, that's too bad. I see it. I won't be a moment. Why does he hurt? Smoke! Coming from the engine. It must be on fire. You better get off because that's what I'm going to do. I wondered what happened. Did you? I don't understand what you mean. Well, it seems a bit funny that your hat blew out of the window before the explosion. Well, it was just a coincidence. Yes, wasn't it? Why, Uncle, I think it was very fortunate for us Ralph's hat blew off just at that time. Otherwise, the explosion might have made Maxie lose control of the car, run off the road into a tree or something. Yeah, and besides that, we all might have been killed. Well, now, will you believe me when I say my life's in danger? Yes. And I think we should thank Ralph for our lives. Or least wise his hat. Well, that's that. Let's see what damage has been done. All right, Maxie, get in and see if it'll start. Back in there? <laughs> Not me. There might be another landmine under the seat. I'll try it. Be careful, Ralph. You'll be sorry. Won't start. No good. Well, we can't stay here all night. Oh, yes, it's been done. I remember I took Minnie out for a ride once and she broke down. <laughs> Not Minnie, I mean the car. And there we were, the two of us, all alone. And before Maxie. I know... Sailing on Lake Louise. White sails in the sunshine. With the green mountains to be inspired to. The blue waters. With gobs of them white caps spraying in the kisser. Shut up. You're making me seasick. You guys gonna do all that with... Less than 20 bucks between you? Oh, let a guy dream, will you? Yeah, dream. You guys waste more time on a dream. Oh, well, here comes the car. Maybe they'll give us a lift. That dream. <laughs> Who hit us? Get his number. Spread out, fellas. Slow me a rope. Has it been an accident? Yeah, we just run into a blonde. And not Dave Gaga. In trouble? Yeah, something happened to our car. Maybe I can help you. I'm somewhat of a mechanic. <laughs> Gotta be a magician to make this thing go. Can I give you a lift? Well, we'd appreciate it very much if you would. No trouble at all. If you uh going to the way of Brownsville, we can get a taxi there. Why, sure. I'll hop right in. Hey, Maxie, you got the bag. You put them in the safe line. These folks are in trouble. We'll have to give them a lift. I'm sure you'll be much more comfortable in the front seat. It rides better. Oh, thank you. I'd much rather ride in front, too. Where do you want these bags? Oh, put them in the back. Hey, Max, you stay here. All alone? Stay here, I said. By myself? Nobody else? This is very kind of you, Mr. Uh... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Dave Hammond, and these are my two friends, Billy Gilbert and Shemp Howard. How do you do, Mr. Uh... Glad to know you, too, Mr. Uh... 
Well, Earl uh, is hardly my name. I'm Joan Gardner. Uh, this is Ralph Williams. How do you do? My uncle, Mr. Gardner. Oh, yeah. Well, now that that's settled, uh, do you live around here? No. Are you going on a vacation? Well, no, not exactly. Well, a sort of a vacation. We're going to the Gardner estate. It's ten miles beyond Brownsville. Uncle, why didn't you tell me? You know I can't go back there. Joan, don't act like a child. Everything's going to be all right. All right. Well, I won't go, I tell you. I, I won't. You can't blame Joan for feeling the way she does about that place. It doesn't hold very pleasant memories for us after what happened. Nothing's going to happen. I'll see to that on that side. Oh, pardon me, gentlemen. Just a little time there, man. It doesn't amount to anything. That's all right. Right ahead. Well, it's interesting. I'm sorry. Uncle's right. Oh, I understand. Everybody has some sort of a family skeleton. By the way, Mr. Hammond, what business are you in? Oh, I'm in the carnival business. The carnival business, eh? Mm-hmm. Sort of a vagabond life, isn't it? I mean, it doesn't require much ambition, does it? Oh, I don't know. You have to have a bit of ambition and a little nerve to pal around with a wild gorilla. A wild gorilla? Yeah, she's right back there. You mean that's a gorilla back there? Yeah, yeah. Hey, not me. There's a gorilla from back of us. Don't let shampoo you. Matter. You got a wrench? Monkey wrench? Oh, I don't get pushed enough. Uh, I'm stuck with my car. I want to get pushed. I'm sorry, but I'm in a hurry. Let's take a few minutes, no, The wrench is under the seat. I haven't got it. I'll time. get it for you. I'll tell her No, no, no. Never mind. I'll okay. tell you what I'll do. I'll go in town and send a mechanic. Well, I don't want to go to town. Well, I, I'm sorry I'm in a hurry. I'd like oh, to do something. See you, generous fella. You're one of those good Samaritans I've been listening to. I'll tell you what I'll do. Let me fix your windshield. Oh, you don't have to bother. Just... Oh, don't trouble at all. Hey! Hey, you, hey! Stop! I can't see. That's the generous idea, you fool, you. Go on, you good Samaritan. Oh, that's fine. I'll see you around. A little wrench like that, you're afraid you're going to be ashamed of yourself. You're a wise guy, huh? Of course, you're ashamed of yourself. I'll see you. you. I can't be ashamed of it. Well, sound anyway. Well, I want to thank you for your kindness, Mr. Hammond. Someday I hope to be able to do something for you. No trouble at all. You know, there's something about this place I don't like. Yeah, and there it is right there. How do you like that? A cemetery right in their own front yard. Let's get out of here. Someday if I ever get rich, that's what I want, my own cemetery. I'd like to hit an oil well. I want to thank you, Mr. Hammond. It was very sweet of you. Think nothing of it. It was a pleasure. And I want to thank you, Hammond. Okay. Where are you going to the luggage? Come on, Joan. Good night, Mr. Hammond. Good night. Oh, Miss Gardner. Yes? Miss Gardner, I don't mean to be personal, but I couldn't help hearing what went on in the car. Are you afraid of something? Why, I... I don't know. I... You seem so frightened. Is there any danger? Well, I... Is there anything I can do? I don't know. I... Oh, well, maybe I'm being silly. Let's not talk about it. I wish Dave would take her phone number and let's get out of here. Good evening, Mr. Dodd. Good evening, Mr. Benson. Who are those people? You didn't say there'd be anyone else. Oh, well, they're not staying. We have some trouble with our car, and they were kind enough to drive us here. Oh, I see. There's really nothing to worry about. I, I've been upset about other things. Wouldn't you like to come in for a minute and have a drink? I think Mr. Hammond and his friends are in a hurry, Joan. We can spare a few minutes. I think the boys would like that. Oh, Billy, Jim. Yes? What do you want? We're going to stop here for a while. Come on in. I'm going to stop here. I knew it. I felt it in my bones. Don't say bones. Don't shout. Barney! Oh, not you. I don't like this place. You know the girl didn't like it either? When she got out, she was scared to stay here. And there's the cemetery. Put two and two together. What do you get? <laughs> One, two, three, four. That's when you stop that. Come on. Come on. Follow me, gentlemen. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Who's laughing? 
<laughs> Don't follow her, you fools. Leave the house while you're still alive. <laughs> Must be working on your imagination. It's not working on my imagination. Imagine that. No, what do you think I am? You think I'm just a bird? He might be. Oh, shut up, Billy. If you gentlemen will excuse me. I'm going to my room. No doubt you'll be gone before I get back, so I'll say goodbye. We'll be going, all right, won't we? Irrefutably. Irrefutably. Oh, goodbye, Mr. Williams. Goodbye. <laughs> it's been ver Get oh. away. Look at that. It's crooked. Look at Straighten it out, will you? Thank you very much for your kindness. Nothing at all, thanks. I've had a swell time, but this wasn't it. I hope I can see you again soon. Good night. Good night. in the house. I forgot about him. He was sent here something about the wiring. You usually work in the dark? I'll look someplace else. What do you make of it? I don't know. There's something peculiar about him. Oh, John, you're making something of nothing. Uncle, you're just as frightened as I am. Why don't you admit it? That guy don't come out here pretty soon. I'll have nervous indignation. Indignation. Nervous nervousness. Go on, would you blow the horn? Get him to come out. All right. Well, your friends are getting impatient. I'll see you to the door. Right. You didn't have to blow it that loud. Did I you? didn't blow it. I pressed it. Don't tell me I blew it. <laughs> I got a witness. There's my lips. I know what's going on. Well, Miss Gardner, I'll say goodbye again. Goodbye. Goodbye. John, why did you come back here? I didn't want to. I, I tried to stay away. Remember what happened to your mother? The same oh, thing. Stop it, happened. stop it. I told you to never mention that. I won't listen to you. Now, go away. I heard a scream. I ran in and found she'd fainted. Come on, back. What is that? This is far enough. What's the matter? Somebody clawed her? Oh, Uncle. What happened, Joan? Well, I, I was talking to Mrs. Benson, and, and the lights went out. I turned, and I was looking around the room for her, and, and I heard a sound at the window. I turned around, and, and right behind me was a man with the most horrible face. I screamed, and that's all I remember. Did you see where he went? No, but I'll never forget that face. Oh, Uncle, we must leave here at once. 
I think you're right. We'll go right after dinner. By the way, where is Williams? Right here. I was upstairs. Didn't you hear Miss Gardner scream? Yes, I did. Why did it take you so long to get here? Not that it's any of your business. I couldn't get here any sooner. I wasn't quite dressed. Joan, dear, are you all right? Yes, thanks. Mr. Gardner, you must realize by now that you and your niece are in great danger. Uncle, I think he's right. I told you it was useless to run away, that they would find you anyhow. Who would find them? Shut up. I'm sorry, pay no attention to him. It's really nothing. I think it is something. At least if you don't think anything of your life, you should be concerned about hers. Well, what would you suggest? Whoever it is must still be here. I suggest we search the house and the grounds. If we don't find anyone, I think we should call the police. The boys and I will be glad to help you. Won't we, fellas? No. Yes. I was a little too quick for you that time, wasn't I? Oh. Well, I think you're right, Mr. Hammond. The boys and I will search upstairs. You look around down here. That's fine. I'll stay here with Joan and Mr. Hammond. This way, gentlemen. Don't forget, if you see anyone, yell. Don't worry. If we see anyone, you'll hear the loudest hollering you ever heard. Come on. You better go out first. Oh, no. It's my pal. You are first. I appreciate you being obnoxious, but you go first. Tally ho! <laughs> we just heard that terrible voice. An awful laugh like this. <laughs> Cut it out. You're scaring me. Now, uh, gentlemen, if you're going to go out to pieces, you'll be no help at all. Come on. Look in the chauffeur's room there. I'll search this room over here. keeps bothering me. What old guy? The old guy in the picture with the long mustache and the big beard. Where's the picture? Right over there. Where? Over there. You're crazy. He ain't got no mustache. He's got one of those things, those spinach, the, the, the sideburns. Don't the tell things. me. Don't tell me he's got a long mustache. I'm telling you that he's got the things that come out. I know what they're like. All right, all right. Go on, look for yourself. He's telling me that when I get the... Get in the mustache. Get in the side point. He's got a little must down there. A head trim. What's the matter with you? Are you losing your mind? No. I'm telling you the... To... Uh, What's the matter? Maybe my glasses are dirty. You ain't got no glasses on. Ain't I? No. You never wore glasses in your life. Maybe that's why they ain't dirty. What do you see now? I don't want to look. Look? I don't want to look. What do you see now? I'm afraid to look. Will you look? Let's, let's both look together. <laughs> He's nude. We'll, we'll do something about it. All right. I'll settle this once and for all. Listen. Either you or we have got to leave this room. All right, I'll go. Say, I told you I'd fix it. Help! What was that? What? I don't know. Hey, wait for me! Hey, where are you going? The noise came from that direction. That's why I'm going in this direction. Did you hear something? Yeah. It came from over there. Yeah, it sounded like Mr. Gardner's voice. You'd better stay here. Yeah, we'll stay here with her. No, no, I'm all right. She has to be all right. There we go. Uncle! Uncle! 
Is he hurt? Yeah, he's out like a man. All right. Let's get him up on the bed. Come on. Up. Up. We got that. There we go. You. What can't you? I got in a beef with some wise guy. If I ever get my hat. More important things to do. Are they all here? Yes. Come this way. Stay down there till I call you. Stay down there? What's the idea? You've got to keep out of sight. Okay. And don't gum it up this time. Don't worry about me. I'm smart as a... Constant must have been here in the room waiting for him. Did you get a good look at him? No. He sneaked up behind me. Uncle, I'm getting frightened. May we join you? What happened? Well, he was lying. We, we had came no in the room. Problem, there was no one. wouldn't have thought for... Shut up. Who's going to tell us? You or me? Oh, Ralph. Uncle was almost killed. Why, this is getting worse. Don't worry, darling. He'll be leaving the first thing in the morning. Are you all right, Mr. Gardner? Yes, thank you. How did you know Mr. Gardner was hurt? Well, I, I saw him lying there, naturally. I suppose he was hurt. Mr. Williams, you were searching downstairs with us. Where did you go? Why, well, I thought I'd look in the basement. Uh, that's right. Mr. Williams was walking up the stairs just ahead of me. Mr. Hammond, I must say I don't appreciate your suspecting me whenever anything happens. Ralph, please. Don't mind him. I'm very grateful to you. Make a slight hint as we go, but these delicate subtitles. May I delicately suggest that we get out of here? Well, we might as well. Goodbye, Mr. Gardner. Goodbye. 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 Oh, Mr. Hammond. Yes? You've been very kind, and I don't know how to thank you. <gasps> There's somebody downstairs. Oh, Dave. I mean, Mr. Hammond, I'm going to ask you a favor. Why, sure, anything. Here we go again. You mean here we stay again? Will you and your friends stay here tonight? Why, yes, we'd be glad to. Thank you. Do you think Dave framed this whole thing? I don't know. Joan, it isn't necessary to impose on Mr. Hammond. Furthermore, I'm here to look after you. What's well, no trouble at all. We'll be glad to stay. Thank you. I'll tell Mrs. Benson to show you to your room. He can stay here if he wants to, but not us. We're going to sleep outside. Wait, the graveyard is still out there. It's warmer in here. But only for tonight. Mrs. Benson, I want you to prepare rooms for the gentlemen. They're staying tonight. Stay? Yes. Do you realize what's wrong here? I do. Mr. Gardner, I think we should all leave here before some Please, Please don't. Mrs. Benson, will you kindly be told you? Will you show the gentlemen to their rooms? Very well. You may have the room on the right. Thank you. And you gentlemen follow me. You may have this room. We have breakfast at eight. If I ever see you again. What does she mean if she ever sees us again? Hey, we've been in here once. Yeah, once too often. See, I told you. A long mustache and whiskers. You're crazy. I told you it was two spinach with... We're not going into that again. Pull that thing down. All right, all right. Come on, let's get undressed and get the bed. No. I'm not going to take my clothes off in this joint. I might take my head off. Well, my name's around there, I guess I'll go in and take a cold shower. I hope they got hot water. Whoa, whoa, whoa.
Hello.
better idea. What? Let's get out of here. Listen, you go down and get in that gorilla outfit. I will not. Go down and put on that suit. I will not. I need to put on that suit. You're not bulldozing me. Oh. That way. I told him a thing or two. Oh, open the door. I... You got that quick, Jim. Look, I'm putting blanks in this thing. In case I meet some of those guys, I can shoot it. <laughs> Scare them. <laughs> All right, get away from there, will you? Good thing working here. I said, get away or I'll let you have it. All right, don't give me that. Save that for those other guys. You can't Do you look like a gorilla? You're starting to smell like one. Come on, follow me, but not too close. Champ, <laughs> is this you at my side? Champ, talk to me. Champ. To me. Shem, is this you over here? No, this is me over here. Then this must be. Where are you? 
are you?
imagine anyone building a tunnel like this. Spooky, isn't it? Yeah, spooky. You know something? What? I'm cold, but I'm sweating. Ah. Ooh, two tunnels. What do we do now? We'll separate. Maxie, you go into that tunnel, and Shep, you go into that one. What are you, you going to do? do? Well, I'll stay here and see how you make out. I'll, I'll protect you. I'll stand guard so nobody can hurt you. Oh, when they need call, me. Don't worry. All right, get on my ass. Right yes, yes, I do. Go on. Call me when you want me. Yes, yes. Excuse me, buddy. Can you tell me the way to the graveyard? Straight down, bare right, and then make a snappy left. Thank you. It's quite all right. <laughs> Hey! We found the gorilla! Here at Utah. He's right over here. Oh! 